UVW wrapping is very powerful, but it's also very time consuming. If you unwrapped this entire fence by hand using the techniques I previously showed you, with 30 pegs and two cross beams, you would be at it for hours. If you ever find yourself in a position where you are repeating the same action over and over, you need to start thinking about it um, from the standpoint of how can I do this in a different way to save myself time. Um, a lot of times there's some program that's already been written by somebody else which automates the process and it's just a matter of finding it on Google. If you want to go further than that, which I would highly suggest to anyone serious about being in game development, pick up a little bit of Python. Learn some programming. That way you can write your own tools. Um, I don't even need to program to make this process more efficient. I gave it some thought and I realized that all of these polys are lying on top of each other in this space before you even go in and start editing the UV maps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the front face, move it down to here, and then I'm going to go through and select this face on all of the pegs. I don't even need to go through and select. All I need to do is select it in here because they're all lining on top of each other. Just think creatively. Think about ways to save yourself time. And now every single one of these faces are selected on every single peg. So then we break that. Oh, it loves it when I do this. Break that and then pull it down to here. And then go through and do that for all of the faces in a clockwise fashion. Going around and place them next to each other. Weld the vertices, rotate them, and create that shape that I showed you earlier. Then all you need to do to create a little diversity is in your viewport, go in and select the pegs and um, at that point that cross-like shape will be made and then you can just offset them manually. That'll take you maybe, what, half an hour? Whereas unwrapping the entire thing would have taken several hours. If you can learn to think creatively, then you will be a valuable asset to any studio. That is the most important thing that I could ever implant upon anyone. Because of uh, some freelance work I was doing, I had to update 3D Max to a different version while in the middle of this tutorial. And because of that, I had to transfer my scene via an FBX to a different version of Max. In the conversion process, all my objects were uninstanced from each other, which is incredibly obnoxious. I decided to fix this by going online and downloading a set of scripts called Blur Script. I highly suggest you download it, just Google Blur Script. Once you download it, you want to export all the files into your th uh, 3D Max directory and then restart Max. From there you right click on the toolbar, hit customize, um, go to the toolbars tab and BS Run should be on the list. Right click, edit macro script open and in your th uh, directory where you're keeping um, 3D Max, mine is under G Autodesk, you want to go to scripts, um, blur script, BS run. Um, that, uh, there's a lot of scripts in there but BS run specifically runs every single one of them as a base. So once that's done you uh, you close it and then hit new. Type BS script and this little icon appears. You're going to want to drag the, your BS run into the script and then drag this onto your toolbar. From that point you're going to be able to click on this macro and select this uh, set of highly useful functions. So now we just go to object replacer on this list, run script, and we want to pick the object that we're replacing with, so Bleacher 02, and then select the objects that we are replacing. And make sure we've got Instance selected, Delete Originals, Match Position Rotation Scale, and Replace Selected Objects. 
Now this is going to be updated so when we go in and throw our material onto here, um, it works properly. So I'm just going to go through and do that for the rest of these guys. So now I've got everything uh, textured in my scene using UVW maps and a combination of textures I got from cgtextures.com and Photoshop images that I created. I'm not an expert in importing into game engines yet, but I am currently researching that. As far as I understand, um, creating standard materials is about as far as you need to go before putting it into game engines because you're going to be building your shaders within the engine. So you just need your materials put in the correct slots. Um, for that reason, at this stage in development, all of my materials are set into multi-ID um, textures and applied to the scene using standard shaders. I will be going over this and redoing it in V-Ray for the sake of the tutorial, but before I do that, I just want to quickly go over how I have it set up um, as it is now, in case you want to pause the tutorials and start importing your assets into a game engine. When you're working um, particularly on a team, you want to be able to keep your scene as clean as possible. So just like I keep instilling in you, name every model in your scene, you want to do the same for your materials. Um, I like to use material, uh, multi-sub-object materials. If you're importing into games, you don't want your multi-sub-IDs to go too high, so try to keep them grouped, I'd say ideally under 10. Um, this material slot has every single texture in the scene, and the rest of these have it broken down into different categories. And in all of these categories, I tried to keep it at about 10 or less. To create a multi-sub-object uh, ID, you click on an empty material, hit Standard, um, go to Multi-Sub-Object, doesn't matter if you discard or keep, and then at that point, each one of these numbers will correspond directly to this number under your multi-sub-object ID. So this is set to 4. If you wanted this material to be applied, you would put this field texture under ID 4. Um, when you go in here, make sure your name. I'm going to say test. And then you can start creating your um, shaders under here. Diffuse corresponds to the image that is being projected on your screen. Specular um, applies to how shiny it is, and these dictate the shininess qualities. If you double click you can bring up um, a example of your texture and just go through and play with all of these. Most of them are pretty self-explanatory and if they're not you can just look up what they do on the internet. If I wanted to look at what was applied and get an overall list you hit this button right here and that will pull up this dialog. I'm going to hit Scene, and here I can see each one of my materials that I have and what objects are attached to them. Um, if I want to select by material, I say I want to select all the bleachers. So I hit this button, and it'll pull up our object selection, and I hit Select, and all of these bleachers are selected. This is helpful if you're exporting to game objects because at that point everything on this, um, all the bleachers which have this material selected are together. So if I wanted to say export the bleachers to some, a game engine, uh, you would install ActorX on your utilities tab. Choose where you wanted to export to. I've been um, bleachers, and then save mesh ref pose. I'm not an expert with exporting to engines yet, still working on that, but I found that having all select all textured and only selected was um, the most efficient way of getting it working. When you've got that all set up, go ahead and hit this button, which will apply the texture to the material. If later on you get lost and you can't figure out which um, material is selected to a certain object, you can go in here and hit the eyedropper tool, make sure a material is not selected, 
and hit that. If for some reason, say, I lost um, emisc, and oh crap, how do I apply that? There's two ways to pull that back up. You can either then hit the eyedrop tool, or you can go into here and emisc, drag and drop. You want to instance that. So there you go, basic materials. Um, since this tutorial is focused on building the environments and getting it lit, um, I'm going to keep the tech material lecture short. Um, it's all pretty simple. If you have questions, just, you know, Google. Google's your best friend. Um, next, we're going to be talking about V-Ray. So, see you later.